Hey guys, Greg here with CMD Solutions Group. Uh, today's topic is debt consolidation versus debt settlement. Okay, now there's a huge difference between the two. And I want you guys to realize that when you're trying to make um, the final decision on how to get out of your debt instability. Uh, first and foremost, debt consolidation is a loan. It's called debt consolidated loan. And they don't tell you that up front. You know, they hit you with the numbers. Oh, we can, you know, lower your payments from $500 to $375 for 24 months or 36 months or however long their program is. But what you fail to realize is that you're actually paying what you owe plus interest, no matter how low that interest is, plus fees. So that program that they initially set you up for, say 24 months, usually gets extended to, you know, 28 months, 32 months, depending on how they're set up. You know, you get that phone call. Hey, you're not done with the program or I'm sorry. Um, you're still, you know, you're still in basically. And there's really no recourse. Um, they just get you for your money. And uh, the biggest uh, difference between debt consolidation and debt settlement is that everything is, how should I say, uh, forward heavy. Meaning that when you pay those fees, the initiation fees, the interest, your first payment, everything is paid up front. So six, seven months can go by and uh, now no one's answering the phone. Now no one's answering your email. You can't get anyone to respond and now your money's gone. So I want you to realize that when you actually involve yourself in taking out debt to settle more debt or resolve more debt, robbing Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. And you, it's a never ending circle. You know, you're taking out a loan to pay your other loans. And in my mind, it makes no sense. In certain situations, it might help. But I, for one, would not want to go deeper into debt to take out more debt and avoid interest at all points. That is, you know, the subject matter. You want to avoid interest. Um, so when they group everything together and they say, hey, you know, we can lower your payments, always ask, is there interest? And with a debt consolidated loan, there is. So that's how they trap you. They load everything in the front. They say, this is what your monthly payment is. This is the interest. This is the fees. This is what your monthly payment is. Unfortunately, I find that type of salesmanship to be unjust and it just makes my job harder, you know, um, as a debt settlement advisor. Um, I don't really feel that debt consolidation is the way to go when you're trying to get out of debt faster. OK, now <clears throat> debt settlement is a whole different beast. OK, basically, it's like settling out of court. You know, you don't go to court. You owe uh, $10,000 in fines and they say, we'll settle for $4,000 or $6,000. That's basically what it is. The best thing about debt settlement is that there's attorneys that support that effort. So along with that lawyer or that attorney support, there's a savings account. Now, debt settlement is not front loaded. It's back loaded, meaning it's performance based. And that means that it's in the best interest of the company, the debt settlement company, to make sure that you don't only enroll, but you stay in that program because they don't get paid unless the debt is settled. And I hope I, I hope I make that clear. It's back heavy. A savings account or a trust is established in your name that you have complete control over, okay? The company does not have power of attorney over your funds, okay? So I want to, you know, calm down the hysteria and the misconfusion of uh, debt settlement, okay? The company does not have power of attorney over your funds. What they do have is power of attorney of the negotiations. So the lawyers or the attorneys on the back end negotiate on your behalf as money is deposited into this trust or the savings account. And as soon as the settlement is reached, 
money will come from that savings account and it will go to pay off that debt. Okay. A few pitfall, a, a few pitfalls, I should say. Um, one, depending on what your credit score is, depending on what you're currently paying, if you're on time or not, depending on your income, depending on your DTI, it can and will have a negative effect on you. I want you to understand that. Debt settlement programs are for individuals with credit scores, in my personal opinion, um, depending on what they want to do, uh, for individuals who have a credit score less than 650, 660. Okay. Anything more than that, um, depending on what you want to do, if you want to buy a house, if you want to buy uh, a car, if you want to take out some more um, lines of credit, um, it will go down. Now, there can be a balancing effect uh, depending on how many accounts are enrolled. Okay. So let's say you have 10 accounts, 10 lines of credit, 10 credit cards, medical bills, a mixture of the two, a mixture of all of them. If you enroll, say, four out of the 10, okay, because you're having a hard time making those payments and, you know, when you are making those payments on your credit cards or on your line of credit, you're only making the minimum payment, which only covers interest. Again, that's that word, interest. You want to avoid interest at all costs, okay? So if you enroll four or maybe five out of the 10 and you continue to make on-time payments on the accounts that you're not going to enroll, there's a balance in effect. So although your credit will be affected negatively, if you're not trying to buy a house, if you're not trying to buy a car, if you're not trying to, you know, take out a new line of credit, don't be so conditioned to the point where you're holding on to a 620, you know, credit score, a 640 credit score, okay, to do nothing. All right. The point is getting out of debt. And like how my mom said, do you want to deal with heartbreak now or devastation later? So individuals who are looking to get out of credit within the next, say, 36 months, 48 months, depending on their situation, debt settlement would be the best one for me. Due to the fact that once you're done with the program, your debt to income ratio would be so low that you're going to get offers in the mail, credit cards, offers in the mail all the time, you know, because your debt to income ratio is so low. OK, your income might be good. Your credit score is on the rise. So I wouldn't worry too much about hurting my credit with a 620 credit score or a 630 credit score. Um, individuals who I work with at the company I, I, I represent, um, you know, individuals have a 580 credit score. Why are you holding on so hard to a 580 credit score? It's beyond me. If, you, if you're $20,000 in debt, you have four or five credit cards. It's hard for you to make the monthly payments, but you don't want to affect your credit score. I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And it's really not their fault. It's not your fault as the consumer because we have been conditioned almost since birth that you have to maintain a good credit score. 620 is a good credit score. No, it is not. Although you might be able to get, say, a mortgage, your interest rate is going to be crap. Okay? A good credit score is 720, 780, 800. That's a good credit score. That's something to hold on to, but not a 620, not a 619, and God forsake, not a 580. So I want to express the differences between debt consolidation, grouping everything together, renegotiating the terms and the conditions and the interest rates, paying off what you owe plus interest, okay, plus fees, being told you're a part of a 24 or 36 month program and that program being extended four, five, six, seven, eight months, okay, debt consolidation versus debt settlement where one, you have attorneys representing you because you will stop making payments if you, you know, if you're not making payments as is. So you're going to stop making payments. You're going to enroll into a program where there's a savings account or a trust fund that you have complete control over, okay, every single month to help pay down your debt, not even pay down, pay off your debt. That, that's a better terminology because we're not paying anything down. We're paying them off. 
Okay. So as the money grows into that savings account, the negotiation power that the attorneys have is much more greater. So when there's a settlement reached, that account will be paid off. That has nothing to do with credit repair. Credit repair is just removing negative or suspicious or derogatory items, even sometimes items that you owe off of your credit report. But what they don't tell you with credit repair is that, hey, you pick up the phone six, eight months from now, a year from now. Guess what? It becomes active again. So now you just removed it off your credit report. And now all of a sudden it pops back up. So again, debt consolidation is grouping everything together, renegotiating the interest rates, paying off what you owe in full, plus interest, plus fees. Debt settlement, establishing a trust fund or a savings account in your name, making monthly deposits into that savings account that you and only you have power of attorney over those funds, having the support of attorney, settlement attorneys, okay, to support you, to negotiate on your behalf, and settling that debt. Usually terms run from anywhere between 12, 24, 36 months, depending on the amount of debt that you have. So the negotiation will happen like if you owe $20,000 in credit cards, okay, and they'll you negotiate 40%. OK, now you take that number, that 40 percent. Those are your savings, eight hundred dollars or eight thousand dollars. I'm sorry, eight thousand dollars. Now, that eight thousand thousand dollars is what you're settling for. But don't forget fees. OK, don't forget banking fees, withdrawal fees, attorney fees. So that eight thousand dollars settlement, that's not your savings. Usually with debt settlement on a $20,000 debt, you're, you're settling, your savings is somewhere in about three or $4,000, okay? And that's because you have attorneys behind you, all right? So again, i rather get out of debt quicker knowing that I have full control over my savings account and that I'm dealing with a, a, a performance-based institution and that that institution will not get paid until debts are cleared rather than grouping everything together, taking out a loan. And you might not even get approved for the loan, depending on what your credit score is, depending on what your DTI is. So don't be fooled. Understand the difference. Debt consolidation, loans, interest, fees, debt settlement, savings account. You have power of attorney. Settling them for a fraction of what you owe, two years or 24 months, 36 months, things of that nature. And hey, if you have more funds to go into the savings account, by all means, go right ahead and do it. But to me personally, getting out of the debt is the best solution. Stay cool, stay out of debt, watch your money.